Hello, in this video I'm looking at sketching the derivative based on the original function. If you look at this graph here you can see there is a cubic and here is the actual function itself. It has a local maximum and a local minimum. So let's have a think about what's happening with the gradient of this function. Over here on the left, just imagine you were walking up a hill. And as you walk up the hill, it's pretty steep here. So the gradient's also larger. As you get closer to the top of the hill, the gradient also eases off. Once we get to the local maximum, we start going down the hill. So as we go down the hill, you can see that it gets steeper and steeper until at some point here we're at the steepest point of the trip. And then as we walk along, it becomes less steep. And then we get to this dip at the bottom, which is like a valley, which is a local minimum. As we keep walking along, the graph starts to get steeper again, and you can see that the gradient is also increasing. So let's include a tangent so we can see what's actually happening. I'll move the tangent over to the left, and you can see that the gradient is quite steep there. As we're moving towards the right, the gradient is decreasing to zero, and then it's still decreasing but becoming more negative. At this point here in the middle, we've got our steepest part in the negative direction, the smallest value if you like, because it's the smallest value of the gradient. It is steep, but it's still the smallest value because it's a negative. As we move along, we get to another zero point here, where the gradient is zero. And as we move further to the right, the gradient is getting steeper again. So the critical points are the local maximum, the local minimum, and this point in the middle here, where the gradient is changing from decreasing, because anywhere along here it's decreasing, to starting to increase again. So just looking at that again, decreasing gradient, decreasing, still decreasing, but negative, gets to its biggest negative value, and then starts increasing and becoming positive. So how does that affect the graph? So when you're drawing the graph, you look for these local minimums and maximums, and on the gradient, they will be zero values because the gradient's zero at those two points. So here's those two points here. Let's show the derivative, and you can see it's a quadratic because we've got a cubic, so here's the derivative. We'll put it on. So when we're drawing this quadratic or this graph here, when we don't know what the equation is, we can still figure out what's happening. As we know, along here, the gradient is decreasing. It's pretty big over here, it's a large value, and this is shown by the height of the derivative graph. So the height is quite large here, and as we move along, we get down to a zero value in height, which corresponds to a zero value for the gradient. So let's just show that so we can actually see what's going on. So this black line here is the gradient, it's the tangent to the cubic. And underneath this height is actually the height of this blue graph, which corresponds to the size of the gradient. So the size of the gradient corresponds to the height of the derivative graph. As I move it along, you can see that as the gradient gets smaller, it's not as steep, the height of the derivative gets smaller. At this zero point here, the height of this graph is zero and the gradient is flat. There is zero gradient. As we move along, we get to this point here where the gradient has its biggest negative value. So it's the steepest in the negative direction. And from then on, the gradient is actually going to increase and the height here is going to become less negative and then become positive. So again, as we go down to this local minimum, this height is zero because the gradient is flat. It's zero. Anywhere to the right now, the gradient is going to be increasing and so the height of the derivative graph is increasing. So let's just look at that again. You can see as the gradient's changing, the height of the derivative graph is changing that corresponds to it. If you want to play with this, I'll put a link to this simulation in the notes below. Thanks for watching.